For continuous random variable, let us discuss the uniform random variable. X is a uniform random variable on the interval alpha to beta if its probability density function is given as f of x equals to if x is bounded between alpha and beta, you get 1 over beta minus alpha. Otherwise, in any other point, it is going to be 0. Now, using this information, you can calculate the cumulative distribution function of the uniform random variable over interval alpha to beta. Now, remember that the cumulative distribution function f of a is equal to the integral of f of x dx, x ranges between negative infinity to a. As you remember, this is the area to the left-hand side. Well, if we do the calculation, if a is less than or equals to alpha, we get 0. If a is bounded between alpha and beta, we get a minus alpha over beta minus alpha. Otherwise, if a is more than or equals to beta, you get 1 back. So let us take a look at the calculations. These are all calculus. If a is less than or equals to alpha, f of a, as we defined, is negative infinity to a of 0 dx, which becomes 0. Now, if a is bounded between alpha to beta, f of a, which is the integral of the function 1 over beta minus alpha dx, x is bounded between negative infinity to a. But remember that your a is bounded between alpha and beta. So your lower bound is alpha. And on top, it stops at a. And the function is x divided by beta minus alpha. Now, if you plug in a, then alpha, you get a minus alpha divided by beta minus alpha. Now, on the last interval, if a is more than equals to beta, f of a is equal to negative infinity to a of the function, which is 1 over beta minus alpha dx, and it's equal to the definite integral of 1 over beta minus alpha dx, and x is bounded between alpha to beta. Right? Very good. So, as we discussed in calculus, this is x over beta minus alpha, but x is bounded between alpha to beta, so you get beta minus alpha divided by beta minus alpha, which is equal to 1. So that's how you calculate the cumulative distribution function for a uniform random variable, going back to calculus. Now we are interested in calculating the expected value. For the expected value for a continuous variable, it is equal to the integral x times f of x dx and x bounded between negative infinity to infinity. Now for a uniform random variable, the way that we defined the function, probability density function f of x, it is 1 over beta minus alpha, as long as x is bounded between alpha to beta. Well, the expectation of the uniform random variable can be calculated this way. This is the integral of x divided by beta minus alpha, and x is bounded between alpha to beta. By simple substitution, you have a half x squared, and x is bounded between alpha to beta, so you get beta squared minus alpha squared divided by 2 times beta minus alpha. But on the numerator, you have beta minus alpha times beta plus alpha. The common factors, they cancel out, and you end up with beta plus alpha divided by 2. So as long as you have your uniform random variable, it's easy to calculate the probability density function, cumulative distribution function, and also the expected value. Now, if I ask you to calculate the variance, remember the variance of random variable x is the expected value of x squared 
minus the expected value to the second power. Let us begin, everybody. We need to calculate the expected value of x squared. We already know the expected value of x, which is beta plus alpha divided by two. We are not worried about this piece. We need to calculate the expected value of x squared. The expected value of x squared is one over beta minus alpha, the definite integral of x squared dx, which is a third x cubed. So if we do the calculation, it is beta cubed minus alpha cubed divided by three times beta minus alpha, which we can simplify it into beta squared plus alpha beta plus alpha squared divided by three. We can get rid of the common factor, which is beta minus alpha. Now, to calculate the variance, the variance of x is the expected value of x squared, which we just calculated here, minus the expected value of x to the second power which is beta plus alpha divided by two raised to the second power. The rest is algebra, everybody. It is alpha squared plus beta squared minus two alpha beta divided by 12. Which then can be simplified as beta minus alpha to the second power divided by two. So for a uniform random variable, we have the probability density function. We can easily calculate the cumulative distribution function. Also, we have the expected value and also the variance. To find the standard deviation, we just simply take the square root of this quantity. In this example, time headway in traffic flow is the elapsed time between the time that one car finishes passing a fixed point and the instant that the next car begins to pass that point. Suppose X is the time headway for two randomly chosen consecutive cars on a freeway during a period of heavy flow. The following probability density function of x is basically defined as if x is more than equals to 0.5 it is an exponential function otherwise it is zero the integral of f of x dx is the integral starting point is 0.5 so you have your lower bound of 0.15 the exponential function dx, which is 0.15 e to power 0 0.075 times the integral of the exponential function dx. You can just basically multiply negative 0.15 into the parentheses, distribute that, and factor out this constant. It makes the calculation a little bit easier, which is 0.15 e to power 0 0.075 times 1 over 0.15 e to power negative 0.15 times 0.5. All of these, they get canceled out and you get 1 back. Perfect. The probability that headway time is at most 5 seconds is the probability that x is less than or equals to 5. So you're basically calculating the integral of the function, 0.15 exponential function, times the lower bound is 0.5 and the upper bound is 5. We're basically calculating this area below the graph. And as you know, this is the exponential function and it's negative exponent, it is decreasing. Any number less than 0.5 is zero. So that's how you end up with this line here. To do the calculation, you can basically factor out 0.15 e to power 0 0.075 times the definite integral of the function e to power negative 0.15x dx, which is 
calculated as point four nine one or about forty nine percent. So the probability that it takes less than five seconds, it is the probability that X is less than five or 49%. 49% is the area below the graph, which is basically just right here.